Hello, welcome back to the sailing tutorial series by me, Mr. Toodles. Uh, so today we're going to jump right into gameplay. Uh, we're going to go over some basics. Now this is a game that is an old game of mine. I've been playing for a while with uh, my preferred time settings that we went over in the previous video. Uh, so it's only 921 AD. If you look up at the time, you see the year. Now you start out at 880 AD. And with normal time settings, the way I've been playing, I, I would probably be closer to about 1000 AD. And something I mentioned in the previous video was the theoretical time limit, which I believe, if I'm not mistaken, is 1066 AD. Uh, as far as I know, the game doesn't stop being playable once you hit that date. Uh, however, uh, the years will no longer continue ticking up or something to that effect. So anyways, this is my main character, Stink, uh, Edric Stinky Pants. For all, I'm on Generation 2 on this game. Um, and something to keep in mind when playing Selig is, uh, well first, if you look up here, we have your positions of power button here. You click that and it shows how many civilians are in each of the towns on your map currently. And... This is an important meter to how well your town is doing. Every map is going to have their biggest town with the most civilians. But the higher you can get that civilian count up, the better your town is doing, typically. And it's okay to be in a smaller city, like see Norham uh, is down to 38 civilians, but I previously had it up over 80. And that's because I abandoned and destroyed this town. And now Flethurst is thriving and Ashbury is still thriving. But something, one of the most important aspects about Selig is to understand how the game mechanics work. And that is, uh, when you first start out in this game, the player has no advantages over any of the NPCs. Essentially, you're starting out as an NPC. And every single AI NPC that you see in the game has 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 their own AI, their own needs, their own families and jobs and money. Uh, and it's all kept track of by the in, by the game engine for every NPC. That's why you don't have population limits in the thousands and hundreds of thousands is because every single individual in here is truly an individual. And the reason that's important to keep in mind is because Selig is very much a social game where it's almost impossible to function without interacting with other players. I guess we could call them players <clears throat> since they essentially are. Because they're playing the game just like you are. I, uh... And we get some interesting sound effects. I really like the mm -hmm. sound effects. So with that in mind, um, one of the most important aspects of the game is to make money, essentially. So the best way to do that is to either start or buy a business and make products and goods that people want to buy and can't afford to buy. Now my preferred method of making money is through what's the workshops. And the reason is because you can make high value things. You can make weapons, you can make charms, you can make armor. You can make all sorts of things in here. If we go to inf the information tab down here. When you click on a building, there's this information tab. You can click on it. And if the building has the proper upgrades, you can see the recipes that it is currently uh, able to produce if you have the employees and the materials for. So you see here, this workshop can make silver charms, gold charms, uh, axes, swords, round shields, kite shields, bows, light chain mail. Um, this is a building that I previously owned and I already purchased all the upgrades. Now, an important basic to Selig is your panel here on the right. If you see my mouse cursor moving up and down. On the top, you're going to see the different trading posts on your map that you can access, including uh, the merchant camp, which comes and goes, uh, usually kind of randomly. 
But these others are the markets for the different towns on your map. And it's important to keep track of these. You can also keep uh, keep track of the See? Yeah, the merchant camp just disappeared. Up here next to your positions of power tab, you have your compare markets. And this will show all the stuff that's currently in the different town markets and their prices. So we have 24 fruits over here in Flethurst. You can buy them for 12 silver or you, if you have excess that you want to sell to Flethurst, you can sell them to that marketplace for 8 silver. Standard economy. Now, early game, a good way to make money is to keep track of the different products and their prices on these markets. Typically, if you have uh, way too much of, if you see one of these markets has way too much of something, the price will go down. Uh, let's see, here's, this is weird, but, okay, you see this up arrow? It says price adjusting, because there's currently zero, A oh, jeez, okay. Hang on. There's currently zero ale in the Norham market, and you see that price has just gone up from eight to nine. There's 32 here in Ashbury. If we keep track of this, eventually the the buy to sell will between the two markets will even out and even flip. So then your goal would be be to buy the ale from the Ashbury market at uh, this uh, buy price of 10 and then sell it to the Norham market for hopefully a sale price of, a, of 11 or higher to make a profit. And this can be done through all of the markets. Now, moving on to relationships. The reason relationships are important, like I've stated previously, is that uh, Salig is a social game and you almost can't you can't play the game without some sort of social interactions and I'll give you a good example as to why why that's important say I want to buy this workshop here that's named gold charm stew because I previously owned it we go here we go buyout owner we get this pop-up here that says the owner does not like you enough to consider an offer for this workshop increase your relationship to 50 and they may sell it to you at an inflated price all right so what you can then do, if you really want this business, hit the information tab down here. You see the residence. There's no residence, but it has an owner. You can click that owner picture and uh, move your mouse cursor over this area here. And it says your relationship status is 42. So you need to get that up over 50 in order for him to even talk to you. So what you can then do is you can right click on his picture. You can... Oh wait, no, I'm sorry. Right down here in the uh, in this bar down here, you have track character. You can track him, that way you don't lose track of him. And you can double click on his picture and it'll take you to right where he is. So this guy is currently in the church. Right, okay. So up here in the top left, you see this picture up here. This is your main character. And when you click it, you get all this stuff down here. This is your main information tab with, you know, you can click information here and it'll show you your spouse, your heir, uh, all your different skill points, which we're going to go over that. That's something I touched on in the previous video. We'll go over these skill points here in just a moment. But it also has your pockets and in my case I have a backpack on, so I have a pack with food. But you've also got your equipment over here. Now, none of this equipment is generated arbitrarily. You can pick up weapons and shields. These are the Viking ones from Viking raiders that invade your town. And if you defeat them, you can loot their corpses. So that's what I've done here. However, this pack and this outfit was produced at uh, a leather worker and a, uh, and a workshop. Uh, in one of the towns on this map by NPC players or by myself. Nothing is generated arbitrarily. Everything you see on the market is produced by either you or the NPCs. So if neither you or any of the NPCs are producing anything, there will be nothing on the market to buy and sell, including food. Again, it's a living, breathing world. Alright, so let's go back to Wolfrith here. Now my goal is to get my relationship status up to uh, over 50 with this guy, right? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to right click, 
on his picture and click follow. And that's going to send my guy over here to follow him. Now I've prepared for this. You see I've got these gold charms here. Plus four likability. This is... Uh, gold charms are the best way to increase your relationship status with somebody when chatting with them or giving them things. <clears throat> and the way... And the way you use it, I'll, I'll show you here in just a sec. Uh, what is my guy doing here? I need him to follow this guy. Oh my god. Alright, go to the church, dude. <laughs> We're still having a lot of pathing issues on, on Sailor, unfortunately, but I am very confident that the, those issues will get worked out at some point. Now to speed this up, I'm going to hit the plus button here a couple times and speed up time. Send this guy over here. And then hit the minus button to slow down time. Reselect this guy. Alright, we're going to follow him. And we're going to keep an eye on his status. We're going to speed up some time here. Keep an eye on his status. Because once he's done, this status indicates what he's currently doing or working on. Okay, so... He's sleeping, so I'm going to give him a gold charm, but before my guy does it, I'm going to equip a gold charm to make sure we get maximum relationship status. Now, when you give somebody a gift, it does increase your relationship status. Specifically, oh, damn it, okay. Never mind, he went to sleep before I could give him the gold charm. Alright, we're going to speed up time again. And I'll be back as soon as I'm able to do this. Alright, so... I've been trying for a couple minutes now to get this guy to be able to give him the gold charm, but I can't ever seem to time it right, and that's something else you need to consider when you're playing this game is because everybody has their needs and their jobs and everything, You, if you want to interact with them, you're going to have to learn how to time it. So this guy works at the church. He's a, he's a monk. So he's writing scriptures right now for the people. To deliver sermons uh, but that seems to be all he does he just writes his scriptures and then goes and sleeps and then writes scripture so there's um, there's not really a good time of day that I can interact with him long enough to give him this item so instead of uh, let's see here where are we yeah we're all the way in another town so instead of trying to get that relationship status up to 50 we're going to try a different approach here now you have options in Salig. real quick we're going to go over these stats and this will be important uh in just a moment you'll see why so if you click your information panel you have all your different stats now this is based on a skill level between 1 and 100 for every single item Every time you do one of these uh, actions, you get a certain amount of skill points that increase your skill level. Every time you do one of these actions, it doesn't necessarily go up by one or even half a point. Um, typically, it's a percentage of a point, but if you do them enough, you, get, you, get, uh, you eventually add up points and then it goes up. For instance, fitness for my character is 100 because he runs around everywhere. Now that's, you don't have to run around everywhere, you can ride on the back of carts, or you can catch rides in carriages. If you, if you or an NPC owns a trading post with carriages. That does cost money though, and that might be something we go over in a future video. Uh, but for the purposes of this video, you see my archery is at level 78. Uh, so my plan is to just kill this guy. Since I can't catch him at a good time, I'm just going to kill him. Which is fine, because if I go to positions of power here and I click on my city, Ashbury, I'm a watchman. Now, you do get corruption points for killing people, but as a watchman or an abbot or a town reeve, uh, you're immune to the law. So, you can get corruption and you can make enemies, which I can show you real quick. To click on your relationships tab up here you see we have all these different things employees acquaintances friends enemies 
Uh, these are people that I've really angered, either through murdering their family members or burning down their businesses, which I've done quite a lot of. In fact, it looks like one of them is in my own family. Negative 233. So, you gotta watch out for enemies, because sometimes they like to burn your stuff down or try to kill you. Alright, so for Wolfrith... See, my archery skill, I would prefer it to be at level 100. Uh, let's see if I can find the, uh, the archery range. Now, on every map, there's an archery training range, as well as a melee training range that you can use to get these skills up. If I could just find the one over here. Uh, I will come back to you. Okay, so I couldn't find the training range in the town of Norham, so I ran my guy all the way back over here so that he can train. You have to be mindful. These uh, you can't just train on any single, anyone that you choose, again, because there's, there's no advantage that the player gets that the NPC can't also get. So if these are currently being used or there's an NPC on its way to use them, uh, you cannot use them. So, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to speed up time. I'm going to wait for one to become available. Wait for these guys to finish what they're doing. There we go, there's one. And we're just going to sit here and watch our archery knowledge increase slightly. And if we go back to our information tab, scroll down to combat, archery is still at 79. It only goes up slightly. And you only get uh, a skill increase if you make a hit with archery. Same with, same with uh, melee. Where did I? I just scrolled too far. Did I scroll too far? Where's combat? There it is. Archery is now 80. All right, so I'll come back to you guys once I've gotten the skill to 100. Okay, so we got his archery. We got my guy's archery skill up to level 100. You can see here, 100. And the reason that's important is because you don't want to miss when you shoot at somebody because they'll then call the police or alert their family members and nearby people and then they'll hate you and you'll get more enemies and more of your stuff will get burned down. So we like to avoid that if we can. So this guy right now is sleeping. So I'm going to right click on him. Oh, maybe I can give him an item. Hold on. Let's try. Click on this guy. Give him an item. Maybe it'll work this time. And I won't have to kill him. Okay. Oh, it worked. Okay, see, here's your relationships notification here. Plus 14 with Wolferth. Gift. It's now 56. Okay. Well then, all that for nothing. Now that I've got my relationship status with him up over 50, I don't know why he's a monk way over here in Norham, but owns this business over here in Ashbury. But, regardless, I should be able to buy this for an inflated price now. I can't. So, I'm going to buy this. You have the option to buy without workers. But I bought it with the workers. And now I own a business. And if you look over here on your right side, here's all your buildings. Your new business now shows up here. And this is the quick access menu uh, to all of your buildings that you own. Now, there is additional options here further to the right, which is businesses, houses, storage, uh, agriculture, empty plots, uh, and all. And your favorites. You can actually add some of these as your to your favorites list. I don't actually know how to do that. I've never done that. That might be something you could find on the wiki page. Alright, so now that we own this business, we have... Eh, oh, crimes committed. Who cares? So that's the basics to buying a business and getting yourself set up. Now, the trick is, after this, making sure that you have supplies. If you click on the information page at the bottom of your business here, it shows you the same information as when you clicked it without buying it. You know, here's your recipes. Here's the things you can make. And if you click on each one now that you own it, 
it'll show you the ingredients for them. So to make brown shields, we would need three wood, one leather, one iron. So we've got wood, leather, and iron. You need more wood than the other two, so we have more wood than the other two. You can also make your gold charms here, which requires two gold and one gem. Now something you'll learn very quickly is that any business that you run that sells products like these, you know, in-game products, or, or in-game, uh, I guess, uh, end-line products, will often require ingredients that you can get from other business types. For instance, this workshop, in order to get gold gems, to get gold gems or silver for silver charms, I'd need to own a mine, at least one mine, and have the employees to mine gems and silver or gems and gold to get the two ingredients to make the gold or silver charms. And now if you wanted to make swords, you'd also need wood, so you'd want to you want to buy one of these or own one of these wood cutting huts. And if you own one, you can assign your employees to either cut firewood or regular wood, which for the purposes of the workshop, you'd need regular wood. However, firewood is an excellent way to make money in the beginning because the towns always need firewood. And you can export it, which is something we'll go over later, uh, for a, a decent amount of coin. And something to keep in mind when um, you purchase new businesses is that there is an upgrade path for any building that you own. And what I mean by that is down in this information bar you have this upgrades tab here. These are all the different upgrades you can buy, including inventory and workspace upgrades. Now these get progressively more expensive the higher tiers you get, uh, at least on the inventory and workspace upgrades. And all of these upgrades, uh, you'd want to go through and, and uh, read them, but they are all necessary at some point, uh, the further you progress in the game. And the same can be said with uh, your carts here, and this was something I mentioned in the previous video your wagon carts. Now this one has been fully upgraded, so it doesn't require a person uh, to pull it. Now if you don't have any upgrades, you won't see this horse icon here. And actually I'll just show you. We'll go ahead and buy a new cart. Let's buy a new one. Okay, so we have our tiny cart. Now you can assign somebody, one of your employees that work in this building, to pull it, and then you can load it with supplies and take it over to uh, the marketplace or you can go down the upgrade path and once you buy two upgrades it becomes an automatic horse cart but the further you upgrade it the more space you have to uh, put more goods onto it my god why why do you do this where did it go there's one more upgrade Alright, see, so 3,000 inventory upgrade. And any transactions that happen, keep in mind, are going to show up right here under your money pouch. Now, if you can actually click the money pouch and it'll show the last couple transactions uh, that have either increased or decreased your uh, money total here. Now, over here, this is my total wages to be paid out at 11 p.m. This is the wages that I pay my employees. So anytime you do a business, you need need to make sure that every day you have enough money to cover those wages as well as any needs that you might have otherwise if you go negative on your silver count your employees will start quitting and your relationship status with them will go down and then it'll not be a fun time for anyone all right so now that we've got our horse cart we can click on it here just click on the cart and you can see right here you it shows uh, nearby inventories you're going to click your workshop and say you want to sell your round shields. You can just left click them, drop them in here into your cart inventory. Same with anything else you want to sell. Just drop all these in here. And now if you're holding whole stacks of things, meaning uh, 95 or 125 or more, you can change the amount that you want to hold uh, by clicking these or the plus minus button. All right, so now that you've got your cart loaded, you've got your different building destinations here. These are 
everything that shows up here on your send cart menu is either buildings that you own or marketplaces that you can access on the current map. So say I want to sell to the Ashbury market. With my cart selected, I will then left click on Ashbury and you can either send it to go to the market and, and if you click this, it'll just stay at the market. You can send it to, it'll, it'll send it to the market, it'll stay there without selling. Or you can send it to offload, which will send it to the market, sell everything, but the cart will stay at the market. Or you have a third option, which is offload and return home. It'll send it to the market, unload its inventory, and then return back to home. So we're gonna do that. You see I got my cart selected here, it's gonna start moving. It's going over to this trading post. And pathing, pathing, pathing. Come on, you can do it. You see, it's a uh, everything's been sold and trading knowledge increased, and here's all the money you made from it. And now the cart returns home, and that's how you sell things to the marketplace. But again, you have to pay attention to the marketplace itself. Uh, see if you'll. Basically, you'll always make a profit no matter what, but if you want to maximize your profit, you want to make sure that you sell to the proper marketplace that has the least amount of the items that you're selling. And I think that concludes today's tutorial about the basics, relationships, and uh, making money uh, through business ownership on this game.